Because when I did a double crochet, because I'm like, this will go faster. I'll get it done quicker. Just don't cut corners like me. Hi there, Michelle here, also known as Fancy Dice or Tea Party, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be redoing a project that I did months ago because I didn't like it. One of my very first crochet videos on here was me trying to make like the strawberry cardigan where I showed you guys how to make the actual strawberries. Well, it was a thrift flip, so I didn't make the cardigan. I just took an existing sweater that I had thrifted and just added the strawberries on it. I just didn't like it. I didn't like how that sweater fit. I never liked how that sweater fit. It just hung weird, like the way it was shaped, and it was not heavy, but it also just kind of like just drooped. I don't know. I just didn't like how it fitted on me. I took it apart and made it into balls of yarn. This was the sweater. It was the sweater, and now it's this. So I took all the strawberries off of um, the cardigan, and this is what they look like now. They're all in this bag, so I don't lose them, but I feel like I've already lost a few. And I don't know if I'm going to need more or less, because now I'm going to actually make a cardigan out of all this yarn. And look at this. This yarn is so old and it's been like in that shape of the sweater for so long that it's like this. I will admit that it took me a while to actually untangle the sweater because I think it was knit. It wasn't crocheted, obviously. I uh, did have to cut some of the yarn at some points because it was just way too knotted. But I think I got a lot out of it. I think in total I got like five balls of yarn, various shapes. I think this one was a lot bigger and then there was like a few this size and there was a little tiny one. I just kind of went in sections so if I took apart an arm that was a ball the other arm was the other one the front the back all that jazz I just really wanted to do something different I wanted to actually make that cardigan so I wasn't too sure if I was gonna make this a video or not and I've decided to make it a video so I already started it but don't worry I will fill you in on the process what I ended up doing is I made an arm another arm the back piece a front panel like this and I just did double crochets I think if I I were to redo this I'm not gonna redo it again I kind of wish I did single crochets I think it will be fine once you add the strawberries on it and once I add like the wrists and all that I think it will turn out okay I usually make the granny square cardigans and I made two so far so this is the first one where it's just like a single panel to get my dimensions what I did was I really like the fit of my black and white checkered cardigan so I just did some math which I don't like doing math but I did some math where I calculated how big one square is how many squares per part of the cardigan say for the front panel it was five squares down three squares across each square was like four and a half by four and a half four and a half say this way times three four and a half this way times five you get your calculations like listen it'll be a lot easier for you to do you won't have to do all the math unless you know you want it to be a different size but I will let you know what everything is so don't worry about that you will get the dimensions of what I've done don't have to go and do the hard way and do math this is all I have left of the sweater and I still need to make the front panel and I think this will be just enough to make the front panel. Don't know. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do the double crochet. I'm going to show you all the measurements that I have for my whole entire thing. I'm going to show you how to attach it, how to do the cuffs, how to do the bottom, maybe add some buttons. I don't know. In this video I'm not going to be showing you how to make the strawberry because I've already done a in-depth video on how to make a strawberry, like, like how to crochet a strawberry. So I will be linking that below. So this is just for the cardigan part but if you want to learn how to do the strawberry part check out that video I think that's it so let's get right into making the rest of this cardigan here are the measurements for my cardigan for the front panels I chained 37 across in total you're gonna to have 19 inches top to bottom and then 12 inches side to side for the back, I chained 85 across. When I was done, I had a total of 19 inches up and down and 27 inches side to side. For the arms, I chained 54 chains across. When I was done, I had 19 inches up and down and then I had 16 inches side to side. And of course, I definitely suggest you taking a screenshot of this so that way you have it if you decide to make this cardigan. For this project, you're gonna to wanna to use your yarn of choice and your crochet hook of choice. I'm using the five millimeter because that goes with the weight of my yarn. Again, if you're using a thinner yarn, then you will go with a smaller crochet hook. And if you're using a thicker yarn, you'll go with a bigger crochet hook. So it all depends. Read the packaging of your yarn. I'm gonna start off with a slip stitch. So grabbing my tail, I'm gonna loop the working yarn over my fingers, twist it like an X, and then I just switch my fingers like that. So I can take the tail part 
and just pull a loop through. So I have my tail here, working yarn there. Insert my hook. Then I'm gonna pull tightly and there we go. Here's the thing, I've already made all my pieces. Now because all my pieces are already done, like they're already done, I'm just showing you an example of how I made them. I'm gonna start off by chaining 20. So to chain, I'm gonna yarn over, pull through. That's one. Now you just gotta repeat that 19 more times. Two, three, four. This little row here doesn't belong anywhere on the cardigan. It is just for demonstrating purposes only. So say your chain is 20, you're gonna always wanna add that extra chain because otherwise your ends will be like all wobbly and you don't want wobbly ends. So that's why you always add an extra chain when you get to the end because then what you do is you're gonna skip it when you come back. So now that we've made that extra chain, I'm going to skip it. That way our ends aren't wobbly. So I'm gonna yarn over, skip that extra chain, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two more. Then yarn over, go into your next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you can see my chains, that's what it's kind of looking like. And then I'm just going to continue this all the way down. Once you make it back to the end, you're going to chain one, always chain one loop over and I'm gonna turn my project. Again, I'm going to skip that extra chain that I had made. So do you see up here how there's like all these little V's? You're gonna go through both of them. So not just one, you're gonna go through both. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then I'm just repeating this step for the rest of my project and that's it and, and that's that's essentially it that's all you're doing is just building up double crochet chains that is the whole entire sweater is just double crochets okay so now I'm going to be connecting the sleeves I've already done one sleeve here but now I'm going to connect the other sleeve down here I'm just going to quickly show you how I'm connecting things so I've already connected the front panel to the back panel here and then now I want to connect my sleeve I'm going to be doing it so all the rows are facing like this way as you can see like they're going this way on my arm there are 54 chains going across so 54 divided into 2 is 27 so what I do is I'm going to be counting 27 so that's 1 2 3 27 I can't find the proper thing so I'm using an earring I have to show me that this is the middle so right here is my middle and because this is obviously the middle I'm just going to take this Go through here, lock that up. Then I know that these two pieces have to be matching. And then to attach it, I'm going to be doing a slip knot. Insert my hook, pull through. So to attach them, I'm just inserting my hook here, here, loop over, pull through everything, and that, that's it. And then I'm just gonna insert my hook, loop over, pull through, insert my hook, over, pull through. And that's it. And you're just gonna continue doing that all along the edge. And then when your arm from here to here is attached, you'll fold it in half this way, and then you'll stitch along here, and then you'll stitch along here, and then you'll have your arm and your body. I already started on the trim because I wanted to see how it's gonna look. I did a thicker border at the bottom, and then I did a thinner border like on the side of, like on the panel. This was seven, and this is actually four. So I'm just gonna show you how I did this. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna insert your hook, you're going to loop over, pull through. For here, I'm gonna chain four. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So you chain the extra one because when you work your way back, you're going to skip the last stitch to get a nice even border. So you see how there is two kind of loops, so one here and like one here. So you're gonna skip one, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And these are just single stitches. You're gonna do that three more times. So you have a total of four. Because this is a side, so I'm not getting like those nice loops like I would if I was working like this way. I'm just gonna put it in the next little hole here, yarn over, pull through. So I'm slip stitching, doing that again in the next one, yarn over, pull through, slip stitch. And then I'm gonna skip the two slip stitches that I just made and I'm gonna go into the top little loop here. See how there's like one side of loops, then there's the second side of loops. I'm going in the top row. I'm gonna insert my hook, 
Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. I'm gonna do this so there's four. Okay, and then again, adding that extra stitch before I work my way back down. And working my way back down, see how the stitches are? I'm working on the stitches that are away from me. So I'm sitting like over here. These stitches right here are facing me. Whereas these on this side are facing away. So I'm gonna skip that fifth chain that I did, insert my hook into this, just one, not two, right? It's there, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, insert my hook, yarn over, just a slip stitch there, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through everything, slip stitch, and that's basically it. So you're gonna keep doing this process all the way around until you're done. Another thing that um, I realized the last time I made a cardigan, I just wanna show you really quickly over here, is you see how these are looking, how there's like these little kind of puffs almost, and then on this side you see the the stitches here, but over here, they're just kind of like little puffs. And you're going across, you wanna make sure that your outer layer is facing up, and then your inner layer, so the, the inside of whatever you're making is facing down, cause you'll get these like little stitches here, and you don't want that on the outside of your work, you want it to look like this. So that's just a little tip that I uh, learned the hard way. So now I'm gonna go into the cuff. So the difference between the cuff and the border, so instead of when you get to the bottom, you slip stitch, you slip stitch, and then you go back, and you work your way up, back down, then slip slip back in but I do to get the nice kind of like tight sleeve see how like it's kind of like it tapers in so exact same steps we did to make our chain what's difference between the cuff and a regular trim is in the regular trim when you get to the bottom you slip stitch slip stitch work your way back into your trim whereas in the cuff you're going to slip stitch skip a stitch slip stitch skip a stitch slip stitch and then work your way back into the trim work my way back up again. So I'm skipping all of these little slip stitches I made. Same process as the border. You chain your extra one, then you work your way back down. And then when you're back down here again, I'm going to skip, slip stitch, skip, slip stitch, skip, slip stitch, and work your way back up. Skip those three slip stitches. And that's basically it. So as you can see, it's kind of tapering in, whereas this is nice and flat. The cuff, it's really tapering in because it's pulling all of the yarn together, whereas the border is nice and flat because it's just laying flat. So now I'm gonna work on the buttonholes. I gotta admit, I don't really know what I'm doing because I've never done buttons before. So now that I've gotten to the bottom of here, I'm going to do my two slip stitches like I would on the border, because this is still the border. So instead of going like stitching back up into this, I think I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Chain three, so it's equivalent to like one, two, three. And then I'm gonna go into the fourth up here, yarn over, Add one, and then I'm gonna work my way back down, kind of repeating the process that we've already done for the regular border. Just a bunch of single stitches. And then I'm gonna do my slip stitches, work my way back up. That's the little buttonhole that I've made. I think it looks okay. I'm not really 100% sure how to make buttonholes, but this is how I'm gonna do my buttonhole. All I did was instead of attaching it back here, I just made a new row, attached it up here, and then chained my way back down, and just continuing doing it like that. And I still need to buy the buttons, but that's essentially it. These are the buttons I bought. They're one eighth of an inch. To attach them, I'm using my white yarn and I'm using a yarn needle and just doing a crisscross pattern on the button. Then I'm just knotting the two strings in the back once I'm done securing the button. So now it's time to attach these strawberries. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have three anchor points. So like one here, here, and one here. I'm gonna be using this needle. I think it's a tapestry needle. I cannot find my yarn needles anywhere. They're just 
they're just gone. Like, I don't know where they are. Yeah, so if you use a yarn needle, this step will be so much easier for you. Insert there. Oh, I'm gonna pull through. I'm just gonna pull through one string. I'm gonna flip it over, take my ear needle off, double, triple tie it, and then it's gonna look like that. All depending on your knit, you probably could just do it with your hands. You might not even need the needle. Like you can just go like this, one here, another one there, and then like pull tightly. So it just all depends. Like you saw how easy it was for me to do it without the needle, but if the needle helps you, you can definitely use the needle. And now I just have to finish hatching all the strawberries and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. And the cardigan's done. I give this seven, eight out of 10. I think I could have done a little bit better in some aspects of it. Overall, it's really cute. I really like the buttons. I think the buttons are adorable. I've never done buttons before, mainly in sewing projects. I've never done buttons because I'm always afraid about that. And it's not that I'm afraid of making buttonholes. I'm just afraid that I'm not going to like line it up right and then uh, not work out. Crocheting buttonholes, adding the buttons on, super easy, super easy. A few things that maybe I would have changed this I'll take into the future when I make other cardigans is I wish I would have one, made them single crochets. I just like the way a single crochet looks better than a double crochet. And the reason why I did a double crochet is I'm like, this will go faster. I'll get it done quicker. Just don't cut corners like me. All right. So just know your stitches before you start a project because I was halfway through the project and I realized I want to do single crochets, but I was not going to undo what I had already done. But that being said, double crochets aren't bad. I wish I would have made it shorter. I think it is a little bit too long. Not that it's like too, too long. I just think that uh, I wish it was more cropped. That's all. This cardigan was made for me, designed to fit me. So when you do it, take that into account that you might need the sleeve shorter, you might need them longer, you might wanna just change it up. Just do your math before you do the project. And even though I did do math, I was just comparing it to another cardigan and the other cardigan was the granny squares and the granny squares were more of a tighter knit, whereas I feel this double crochet is a looser knit. So when it was all done, I feel like it like sags a little bit. I used old yarn. Believe it or not, older yarn tends to not be as good as newer yarn. You wouldn't think that yarn would expire, but I, I, I actually see this. When I use a newer yarn, the threads are like nice and tight together and they don't like, you know, come loose or, you know, when you're crocheting and you accidentally like stick your needle through the yarn, like through the actual yarn. And then you get, yeah, you know what I mean? That's what was happening with this because it was older yarn. Whereas when I was working, say like on this pink here, which was a newer yarn, I didn't have that problem. For the strawberries themselves, I didn't put anything on my back because the last one I did, I did put them on my back. And the first time I sat in my car and I leaned back, it was uh, uncomfortable because the strawberries were pressing against my back and it just drove me nuts. If you want to put strawberries on the back, go for it. But it may or may not be uncomfortable. So I'm going to answer this question right now because I get it a lot, even though I do put it in the description of how much yarn I've used, what yarn I've used uh, for this project. I do not know. So if you ask me, I do not know. Whatever a sweater, how many balls a s goes into a oversized sweater is how much yarn I use. I took apart a sweater that I didn't personally make. So I don't know how much the person used in it to make the card again. When I tell you that I have no clue how much yarn went into this, I have no clue how much yarn went into this. Maybe three balls of yarn? I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I don't know the answer to this. It's just little things that I noticed after the project that hopefully this video will answer those questions for you. So if you do this project, you'll know that I'm like, oh, I wish I made it smaller. I wish I used a different like crochet stitch. I wish I would have done single stitches, all that jazz. So hopefully I answer those questions. I think that is it. So if you are new to my channel, you like sewing, crafting, but mainly thrifting, why not subscribe? You can also follow me on my Instagram, which is also fancy dinosaur tea party. I think that is it. So y'all have a good day now.